All right, scholars, we have permanent versus temporary differences and, of course, understanding how to account for those. There are two types of differences between pre-tax gap financial income and, of course, the government's taxable income. All differences are either permanent, which means they affect the current year but have no impact on deferred taxes, or they're temporary, which obviously will have an impact on the current and will reverse in the future, so deferred taxes are required. Permanent differences are either non-taxable or non-deductible or special. Temporary differences result in a taxable or deductible amount in the future when the reporting amount and the asset liability are recovered or settled. Permanent differences, as we said, do not affect deferred tax computations. Only temporary differences will create deferred tax assets. So in studying some of those, let's look at some of the items that are permanent difference examples. There's municipal bond interest income. It's financial income, never taxable. Life insurance premiums when a company is the beneficiary. It is a true business expense on the financials, but never going to be a deductible item on the tax return. There are some items that are also permanent differences, but they really deal with more of the concepts right here. And that would be life insurance premiums when the corporation is the beneficiary once again. You also have uh, certain penalties, fines, bribes and kickbacks. We have non-deductible portions of meals and entertainment. That's the 50% that's not tax deductible. We have special allowances like the dividend received deduction when one company pays another company a dividend. And then of course you have the excess depletion over the cost depletion. So in the non-taxable, you have municipal bond interest and of course life insurance paid when an officer dies that would not be, of course, includable in the income on the tax return. But when the executive dies and the life insurance is paid to the company, it's financial income, but just not taxable income. Let's now take a look. There are temporary difference examples. And we're going to show you a little bit of some of the illustrations here. We're going to talk about Ruby Inc. Ruby, 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 do you love me? Ruby Inc. began operations in year one and reported 300000 of financial income for the year. Ruby's tax depreciation exceeded its book financial depreciation by an excess 32,000. They must be using makers, modified, accelerated cost recovery versus financial, which uses slow, straight line. Ruby's tax rate is 35%. Prepare the journal entry for year one and two, assuming that the temporary difference reverses in year two. Calculate the tax expense, current tax is payable and receivable, and deferred tax liability or asset for the financial statements. Our given facts are going to be pre-tax accounting income is 300,000. Taxable income is gonna be 32,000 less. So it's gonna be $268,000. And the tax rate is 35%. When we go to the tax return, we start with the taxable income is 268 times 35%. We have 93,800. That's the currently due to the government. The difference between the financial and the tax return, the temporary difference is $32,000 times the tax rate. That equals $11,200 of future taxes that will be owed. So hence, we take the current $93,800 plus the $11,200 that we'll owe in the future. The amount we owe now plus the amount we owe later equals the total expense on the financials, which is one hundred five. And therefore, our journal entry, we're going to show Current tax expense, 93800 and our income tax expense deferred is going to be 11200 You'll note the combination of the two is your total tax expense, which is 105 The two credits we need are a deferred tax liability of 11200 That, of course, will be a non-current amount. Why? Because under the new standard, all deferred taxes are treated as non-current. And, of course, the current tax is payable with the tax return are $93,800. So what's our journal entry? Next year, when this reverses, next year when it reverses, we'll debit deferred tax liability for 11,200. That's reversing the liability and getting rid of it. And we're crediting the income taxes deferred, which is the 11,200, that's the income tax expense deferred. So then we have the income tax liability for $11,200. So therefore we reverse it out in year two.